well uh, hello everybody so as i had discussed in the in the last class in this particular class we are going to deal with heterogeneous closed systems right so therefore for uh, uh, for do we assume we assume that there are a large number of homogeneous systems just in the last class that i had taken up two homogeneous open systems inside a closed system it was uh, one particular pure substance in two different phases so therefore in this case i would like to extend it slightly further and i i would have say i have pi number of phases since the um, derivation is slightly involved it's very important that we keep all our nomenclatures in a proper form okay so therefore it has say pi in pi phases and the phases has a numbered with alpha such that alpha varies from 1 to pi and we we assume that there are n number of components where each or other we, uh, we can take it as c number of components where the components are numbered as n this is 1 to c and uh, so long what we have done for this particular type of heterogeneous closed systems we have already derived the situation we have already already derived the condition of equilibrium for different type of interactions between the closed system and the surroundings and we have derived the following equations that has been noted down here the as the i have already mentioned the f the first uh, um, uh, equation is for constant s and v and then it's s and p then v and t and this is for constant p and t conditions so therefore in this case we already know the condition of equilibrium for heterogeneous closed systems but we know these in terms of thermodynamic potentials or we know these in terms of extensive parameters very frequently we would like to express them in terms of intensive parameters which can be easily measured or they can be easily estimated now for the we already know the conditions we know that uh, i had mentioned in the first class that thermodynamic equilibrium is the simultaneous maintenance of thermal mechanical and chemical equilibrium and that time i had al also mentioned that thermal equilibrium implies equality of temperature mechanical equi equilibrium implies equality of pressure and chemical equilibrium implies equality of chemical potential but just by a statement of of someone it is not always good to get convinced so i would prove it from you i would start with the condition of equilibrium which we had already derived so long from one of these equations and i will arrive at the condition of equilibrium expressed in terms of intensive variables now here i would like to mention that this particular derivation it or this particular proof was first given by gibbs and what he did he used the first equation say du equals to tds minus pdv plus sigma i mu i dni he used the the equation for du in order to to do this derivation the primary reason for using u as a starting point was possibly because of the symmetry of the equation if you observe we find that in the expression of u each differential on the right hand side is a differential of a total uh, sorry is a differential of an extensive property and the coefficient that we have that is an intensive property usually if you consider the other equations we find that the differential and the coefficients there are mixture of intensive and extensive properties and just because this symmetry is there only in u so therefore gibbs also started proving the condition of thermodynamic equilibrium from du from the expression of du and we will also be doing the same thing and uh, this is the and then we are going from here we are going to start and we are going to arrive at the uniformity of all intensive variables at equilibrium by considering just one function u so therefore while we are considering this particular fu the function the generalized expression this was written for just one phase now if we have pi number of phases 
So, naturally then in that case this generalized expression should be written in this particular form it should be T alpha d s alpha where alpha equals to 1 to pi. Now, here I would again like to mention I have taken up pi number of phases, I have taken up c number of components and the phases are numbered with alpha, the components are numbered with n and I denote the phase by means of a superscript, I denote component by means of a subscript. Since the derivation is slightly involved, it is very important for us to remember uh, the conventions that we are using. So, therefore, and if we consider this equation again we find that since there are uh, th there are um, more than one phase. So, therefore, this should be p alpha, this should be d v alpha and this also should be from alpha equals to 1 to pi. <coughs> and what about the last equation? In the last equation uh, we find that here i should be equal to 1 to c and before that there should be alpha equals to 1 to pi. In that case as I have already mentioned my uh, subscript refers to the component and my superscript will be referring to the phases. So, from here what do we get? From, uh, from this particular uh, situation, so we find that for all the phases I can write down this equation. Now, if I slightly elaborate it and write what do I get? If I, if I just break down the sigma values, it is basically T for phase 1 d s 1 minus p 1 d v 1 plus mu 1 phase 1 d n 1 plus mu 2 phase 1 d n 2 plus so on to mu c d n c phase 1 plus again the for the second phase it is T 2 d s 2 minus P 2 d v 2 plus mu 1 in phase 2 d n 1 sorry I need to refer to the to the components here d d n 1 in phase 2 plus mu 2 phase 2 d n 2 phase 2 plus so on till we get mu c 2 d n c 2. I can keep on continuing this for phase 3, phase 4 and finally, for the pi th phase it is going to be p pi d v pi plus mu 1 pi d n 1 pi mu 2 pi d n 2 pi plus so on till mu c pi d n c pi right. And we have to remember that we are dealing with a heterogeneous closed system as I have mentioned in this particular uh, here. So, when it is a heterogeneous closed system and I am dealing with d u. So, therefore, this equation is supposed to hold. So, therefore, what do I mean to say is this whole thing should be equal to 0 right. Now, Apart from this, we also need to remember that there are also some additional constraints here. What are the additional constraints? The first thing is the individual variations of entropy, the individual variations of volume and the individual variations of the total number of moles of each chemical species, they, they can vary, but subject to the condition that the total entropy, the total volume and the total number of moles remains constant. In other words d s which is equal to d s 1 plus d s 2 plus so on till d s pi this should be equal to 0, because after all it is a closed heterogeneous closed system same way d v 1 plus d v 2 plus so on till d v pi this should be equal to 0. In the same one for, for each and every individual components, we, we can write down d n i alpha, this should be d n i 1 plus d n i 2 plus so on till d n i pi, this should be equal to 0. So, therefore, what do I get? I find that 
I have written down one particular equation in terms of how many variables I have written it down if there are pi number of phases then I have written down the whole equation in terms of pi into m plus 2 number of variables and out of that how many constraints do I have? I have I have two constraints for S V and since there are C number of components I have constraints for all this C number of components. So, therefore, how many number of constraints sorry it is not m it is c because c is my number of components and how many constraints do I have my number of constraints are c plus 2. So, therefore, it is always possible that I can eliminate of a few of these variables and I should be able to write it down in terms of pi into c plus 2 minus c plus 2 number of variables or in other words this particular equation the equation for d u can be expressed in terms of pi minus 1 into c plus 2 number of variables or in other words these number are the truly independent variables since we have eliminated other variables using the c plus 2 number of constraints. These are the number of constraints that we have these are the number of variables that my system has. So, therefore, now I should be in a position to express the entire equation of d u in terms of lesser number of variables here the number of variables as I have mentioned is pi into c plus 2 I should be in a position to eliminate c plus 2 variables from here. How can I do this I know this particular equation. So, instead of d s 1 can I not substitute it with minus of d s 2 plus so on to d s pi same thing can I not do it with d v and same thing can I not do it with d n i alpha. So, what do I mean is instead of d s 1 I can substitute it as minus d s 2 plus d s 3 plus so on instead of d v 1 can I not substitute it with d v 2 plus d v 3 plus so on and in the similar way can I not substitute each and every n n i 1 with minus of n i 2 plus n i 3 etcetera etcetera. So, once I make this substitution and I put it here. So, instead of d s 1 what am I going to have instead of this d s 1 I am going to have minus of d s 2 plus so on and so forth is not it instead of this d v 1 also I should be ha should be having minus of d v 2 minus of d v 3 plus so on and so forth. I can write it in this particular term. So, once I write it down in this particular term I find that there is a d s 2 and there is a d s 2 here there is a d v 2 there is a d v 2 here as well same way there is a d s 3 and there is a d s 3 here. So, once I start arranging it in this particular form what is the resulting expression that I get the resulting expression which I get is t 2 minus t 1 into d s 2 minus p 2 minus p 1 d v 2 plus mu 1 2 minus mu 1 1 d n 1 of 1 plus so on and so forth till mu c 2 minus mu c 1 d n c 2 and in the same way I can write t 3 minus t 1 d s 3 minus p 3 minus p 1 d v 3 plus mu 1 3 minus mu 1 1 d n 1 3 this was d n 1 2 d n 1 3 plus so on and so forth till mu c 3 minus mu c 1 into d n c 3 and 
this we can keep on continuing till for the pth phase we can write d pi 1 minus d 1 d s pi p pi minus p 1 d v pi plus same way mu 1 pi minus mu 1 1 d n 1 pi continuing till mu c pi minus mu c 1 d n c pi right. So, therefore, I had started with this particular equation, I had minimized, I had considered the constraints and then I, had, I could express this equation in lesser number of variables, I could express it with I had started with pi into c plus 1 c plus 2 variables, I could express it in terms of pi minus 1 into c plus 2 variables and this is the final expression that I obtained. And I know that for the closed heterogeneous closed system, this whole thing should be equal to 0. Now, if this has to hold, if you observe the, the individual terms, we find that in order for the entire expression to be 0, the individual variations or the individual coefficients of d s 2, d v 2, d n 1 2, d n 2 2 etcetera etcetera all the uh, all the co individual coefficients of each and every uh, differential they should be individually be equal to 0 if the entire composite d u has to be equal to 0. And what does it imply? It automatically implies that each of these terms they will be individually 0 provided t 2 minus t 1 equals to 0, again t 3 minus t 1 sorry t 1 equals to 0 and so on. In the same way I can write v 2 minus v 1 equals to 0, v 3 minus v 1 equals to 0. So, in general sorry not v very sorry p 2, p 3 minus p 1 very sorry. So, in general from here what do I deduce? I deduce that for thermodynamic equilibrium in a heterogeneous closed system starting from d u s v equals to 0, I have arrived at a condition that t 1 equals to t 2 equals to t pi p 1 equals to p 2 equals to p pi mu 1 of component 1 equals to mu 1 component 2 2 mu 1 pi. In the same way we can we can continue to mu c 1 equals to mu c 2 equals to mu c pi and therefore, what what have, have I arrived at the end? At the end I find that the thermodynamic equilibrium expressed in terms of the thermodynamic potential reduces to the condition of equality of temperature, equality of pressure and equality of all the of the chemical potentials of each and every component present in the mixture. And therefore, we can express thermodynamic equilibrium either in terms of the extensive properties or we can express it in terms of the intensive properties, it is all the same. And very importantly from here, I have come across another very important observation. What did I observe? We observed that I had started initially with pi into c plus 2 number of variables. Now, all this pi into c plus 2 number of variables are not independent. Why? Yesterday, we had, we had derived the Gibbs to hem equation. And while deriving the Gibbs to hem equation, we found out that for each and every phase, the, the s, t, and all the compositions are not independent. If there, if, uh, if suppose it is a single component, then s, t, and and mu cannot be varied independently. If both two are fixed, the other automatically gets fixed. So therefore, we find that out of this pi into c plus two number of variables that we have the actual number of variables are pi into c plus 1, because there is a Gibbs to m equation relating the different number of variables in each of the phases that we are considering. 
So, therefore, from here what do we find? We find that in this particular case the actual number of independent variables, the number of independent variables in each phase is m plus 1, since the Gibbs to m equation relates or rather uh, relates the mth variable with the m plus 1 variables. So, therefore, the number of independent variables in pi number of phases should be equal to pi into m plus 1 right. And if the system is in a state of is in a state of internal equilibrium, then in that case we find that as we have just now found that there are pi minus 1 sorry all of these are c I am extremely sorry. Pi, there are pi minus 1 into c plus 2 equilibrium relations connecting them this we have just now we have we have found this out. So, therefore, we find that if there are number of variables are pi into c plus 1, then for a state to be in a state of internal equilibrium, there are pi minus 1 into c plus 2 equilibrium relations. So, from there what do we deduce? We deduce that the number of degrees of freedom, which we had defined earlier as f, which is nothing but the number of intensive variables, if you recollect they were dealing with intensive variables used to characterize a system minus the number of relations or restrictions connecting them. What is this equal to? This is going to be equal to pi into c plus 1 minus this particular equation. So, therefore, f is nothing but equal to pi into c plus 1 minus pi minus 1 into c plus 2, which is nothing but equal to c minus pi plus 2. And if you recollect, this is the Gibbs phase rule that I had stated without proving, and this is the proof which is available, which shows us that for any particular system in a state of internal equilibrium, be it homogeneous, be it heterogeneous, be it a pure substance, be it a mixture of substances, whatever it is, the number of um, intensive properties that are needed to characterize the system depends upon the number of components and the number of phases and the relation is expressed by the Gibbs phase rule. Now, well I, I end here, but before I end I would just like to mention that I have written down the definitions of the number of phases and the, uh, the definition of phase and definition of component and the number of degrees of freedom or variance, because very frequently I find that there are quite a number of confusions regarding these things. So, therefore, you can you can go through these particular definitions which, which states that the phase is nothing but a part of the system uniform throughout in sorry uniform throughout in chemical composition and physical properties. And each particular phase is separated from the rest of the system by means of boundary surfaces. When we have single phase systems, they are homogeneous. When we have more than one phases, then they are known as heterogeneous systems. And the number of components is nothing but the minimum number of species which are necessary to define the composition of the system. For example, if we have an acetic acid water mixture, then in that particular solution there will be acetate ions, hydrogen ions, hydroxyl ions and so on and so forth, but the number of components are 2, it is acetic acid and it is water since they are soluble. So, therefore, the number of phases is 1 in this case and according to the number of degrees of freedom or the variance that I have already written down. So, therefore, in this particular class I had dealt with closed heterogeneous or other heterogeneous closed system and I had derived the criteria of thermodynamic equilibrium in with respect to intensive variables and from there I have also uh, deduced the Gibbs phase rule which you have you will be using very frequently henceforth. In the next class we continue with our discussions on the physical interpretation and the means of determining the chemical potential or mu 
which we have already come to realize is quite an important parameter as far as phase equilibrium thermodynamics is concerned. Thank you very much.